Hello and welcome to Burning Questions, March 2. It's a massive week in harness racing, not so much in Victoria, but definitely in New South Wales with the Miracle Mile top of the agenda. Three big guests joining me here. We might start with you, Brittany, uh, superstar media performer, now trainer and gun driver. Great to have you on the show. Thanks, Tim. Um, that was a bit of a, a surprise. I'm not sure about gun driver, but we hang on. We see how we go. But, um, no, it's great to be on. And, um, yeah, it's a great week to be involved in harness racing, isn't it? Might be a group one driver come Saturday night. Let's just see how that plays out. Sal Moran, David Moran joins us. Uh, he has the favourite in the Miracle Mile, Honolulu Bay. You must be wrapped, David, but even more excited to be part of this show, I reckon. Yeah, very much so, Tim. No, thanks for having me on. It um, uh, should be a good weekend this weekend. Hopefully, it's just um, it's a great thrill to be a part of the race and just be involved in it. So, um, fingers crossed. And this man doesn't really need an intro. He's more of a part of this show than I am. Andrew Gath, great to have you back once again. Uh, it's good to be on as always. And as Sal said, and Britt, you know, it's a great week in harness racing, and let's all enjoy um, what we get to watch over the weekend. I was going to call you uh, spokesperson or ambassador for Tarkata, but some of the comments you've been throwing around about that joint, I don't know if they're any, if they're actually nice. Well, there's actually no vacancy sign up there yesterday when I was there, so sure, I've done something for them. Yeah, you're doing well. Anyway, well, um, I was going to retweet that from the Trots account, but I thought, yeah, maybe we don't want to endorse those comments. Anyway, let's move on. We've got a, a big sponsor here in Pride's Easy Feed. Pride's Easy Feed stand as a proud supporter of the harness racing industry with their set recipes and quality ingredients to give the trainer confidence in what they're feeding. So make the switch to Pride's and start getting the result you've been chasing. Might start with you here, Brittany, and we're going to head to Melton for the first of our five burning questions. Will there be a winning debut in the Premier Stakes or should we trust those with form? How do you see the two-year-old race at Tadcourt Park on Saturday night? Yeah, I've sort of only had a brief look, Tim, um, and it's always really tricky, these early season two-year-old races, whether you go on sort of reputation or what you've heard or looking at trials, it's always a little bit hard to weigh it up. But um, I really liked the performance of Remy Lou last week in the pink bonnet at Menangle. I thought she was super hard to come from where she was and as wide as she was at first look at Menangle and sort of the time that they ran, it was a really solidly run race overall. They got a little weary late, but she just shut, savaged the line and I, I was pretty impressed by her first start as well. So she looks very much above average. Um, so from what I've seen, and I've seen her up close where I haven't seen the others, uh, she'd be the one that I'm looking to. Yeah, I probably agree with you there. What about you, Andy? How do you see the two-year-old race on Saturday night? A few first starters, a couple with form. Uh, my Bucks night, that's a well-known horse. That was a winner on Monday. Uh, is it Remy Lou's race or have you found one somewhere else? No, I think I've got to agree with Grid. Um if anyone watches the pink bottom replay and saw how Remy Lou found the line, uh, they would have been really impressed with it. And even though it's a young horse and having a trip back and racing back and up seven days later, I don't think I'll worry yet. Some of the first sellers are trialled okay, but nothing special. So, um, yeah, I think it would just be too good, Remy Lou. Dollar eighty on the uh, price to sell, at least from Craig Rail's price assessment. Um, would you take that about Remy Lou, or have you been doing your trial form and found one for us? <laughs> nah. No, I haven't done any trial form at all. Um, tricky race sort of thing with a few of the first starters. I did like John Justice's horse. I think it, I think it ran not a bad race first up. Um, so you know, if, if Remy Lou was to be to be parked, um, you know, you got a couple of first starters like like Michael Stanley to us that we probably don't know a hell of a lot about. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's probably my little rough in the race. But the way, um, yeah, the way Glenn Julie's horse went last week, it will be pretty pretty hard to beat. I would have thought. Yeah, I think we're all in the same camp there. Uh, I didn't want to include this horse again, Andy, for question two, but I just had to. I, I reckon he, I've been on burning questions the last four weeks and I've had him in there three times. And I'm certainly aware that some of your staff members are quoting me. Uh, I'm not sure about verbatim, but they're certainly quoting me or paraphrasing me. Anyway, question two goes to you first up. Surely Outlaw Man can't do it again, or can he? Yeah, obviously this is his biggest test. Um, he's racing out of his class, the race I had him in. Uh, didn't get, you know, fell over. So um, obviously uh, this was the next option for him. So drawn poorly, uh, up up in class. It's going to be difficult for him. But as I say, winning form's good form, and you never know. He keeps drifting. I think he's about seven fifty out to about eighteen dollars. He probably get out to twenty five dollars. But um, he keeps getting better in his work at home, and he keeps getting better in his racing performances. So 
He'll need a little bit of luck, but I don't think he's. Uh, I still think he's a winning hope, but obviously it's his biggest test today since he's been in Australia. You just wanted to stipulate that this wasn't actually the trainer's first preference, just because you've been uh, widely uh, patted on the back for your placement of this horse. Yeah, no, he's probably going to draw good again over a short trip and um, didn't go ahead. Um, I know Sal had his horse in a Curly James as well, and probably would have been a better option for him as well. But it's not enough horses, there's not enough horses, not much you can do about it. Sal, outlaw man, can he do it again? He's in the free-for-all race, up against some really good opposition, but can he make it eight in a row, or is this one a bit tough for him? Yeah, like Andy said, um, winning form is good form, but um, I, I think it'll be a bit hard this week. Um, you know, he, he's probably going to have to do a bit of work this week off the track. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure that it's probably really going to be a horse that's going to possibly maybe drag him into it. I'm not 100% sure, but um, yeah, probably a little bit of a tougher test this week, but um, yeah, pro- probably not for mine this week. What about you, Britt? He was, um, was, in my opinion, I think most people's opinion, his performance last time, he came home in 54-4. It was probably his career best performance, but he's been able to lead all these races and win them. Um, he's not going to be able to do that on Saturday night, but can he still win, Outlaw Man? Oh, I mean, do we know really how good he is just yet? I'm not sure that we've found the bottom of him yet. So um, when horses keep winning like that, like he is doing and roaring through the grades like he's done, uh, he's obviously just taken every step that's been put in front of him no doubt this is much harder and it's a strong field and there's a few horses there uh, that have the barrier draw advantage on him and it's always I guess hard as well when horses I think 99% of his runs here he's been in front so is he a great front runner and will he be as good from off pace well I guess we'll find out but uh yeah he's full of confidence there's no doubting that and that counts for a lot particularly when a few of these horses in this race are probably searching for the winner's circle again so um uh, no it'll be really interesting but he's done a mighty job Got to ask yourself, Curly James. You've got him in the race. He's about a four dollar fifty, four dollar eighty chance. Uh, do you give him a hope? Yeah, I do. Yeah, no, I, I certainly give him a hope. Just, just where he is in running, it's probably a little bit tricky. Um, like Andy said before, this this race obviously wasn't a preference. Um, especially being a ninety to one twenty, that's random barrier draw. It sort of made it even harder. Where, where our horses could have drawn, you know, we could have drawn one and two. Um. It had it been preferential barrier draw on NR, but um, that's made it a little bit tricky. So he can he can win, don't get me wrong, but I'm just not sure where he'll be in running. He's very quick out the gate, but just not sure whether he can cross AJ's white socks uh, or what the story is there. So I won't be there. That that'll be uh, Lee Sutton's decision. Uh, Felvo Fruits is another great supporter of Burning Questions. The Felvo family have thoroughly enjoyed their time in harness racing as owners and we'd like to thank all the trainers across Australia who have trained for them. A very special thank you, though, to Alex and Taylor from Ashwood Racing who have done a fantastic job for them and they look forward to many more successful years together. And for everyone else, remember that eating grapes is good for you. Brittany, what is your favourite fruit before we hit question three? Oh, um, that's probably not a question for me because I don't eat fruit or vegetables. I've got the worst diet of anybody in harness racing and that's saying something. So if I'm forced to eat fruit, if my mother makes me eat fruit at some point in time, it's pretty basic and it's an apple. I can't do much more than that. Maybe a strawberry if it's dipped in chocolate or something as well. But yeah, I'm not too good on the fruit. So I'm not the best ambassador for that. No, nor am I. I'm, I stick to the grapes when they're crushed up and put into a bottle with a cork. Um you might be able to answer this one for us, though. Is the Derby headed to New Zealand, or can one of Shane Sanderson's pair bring the trophy back to Victoria? I'm in the Kiwis camp. I'm with Alta Meteor. I think um, he was excellent last week. He'd sort of had, uh, you know, he'd been here less than a week. He'd had a run the week before at Cambridge, and then he was really good at his first look at Menangle last week, and he showed a really nice turn of foot when produced to the outside and probably just clocked off a little bit late. So you would assume that there's more to come from him just having that extra time to settle into his new surroundings. And um, I was pretty impressed by him in saying that the derby and the free-for-all on Saturday night are some of the toughest races to sort out for mine. I think they're genuine races where any horse could win. So um, with Alta Meteor, uh, Dangerous has been excellent. Um, Catalpa Rescue, I thought, was massive last week as well. So they're good chances. Um, 
and you've got to throw into the mix better be the best also who was massive after doing a stack of work last week so it's very open but on my selections basis I'm with uh Altimedia on top so we'll see how we go there he's got a good draw as well but um yeah tough race over the 2400 if the last few derbies are anything to go by it's going to be running at very genuine tempo yeah looking forward to this one you're with Altimedia what about you Sal you thought you might have had one in this race but not to be unfortunately um from a Victorian perspective could Dangerous or Catalpa Rescue win the race or, or have you got a winner elsewhere? Um, to be honest, I, um, I thought better be the best uh, can probably win the race. I think he's absolutely airborne. Um, I tried to soften him up last week and uh, done myself a mischief. So I got that uh, I got that sort of job out of the way last week. So I, I think he'd be really hard to beat in this race. Um, I think Dangerous would be better if he's driven off the speed. I think... Um, I think he's a really fast horse. I don't don't think he's probably up to to lead in one of these races and winning. So um, I thought he was probably the best chance of Shane's horses. Um, but yeah, I thought better be the best uh, would be extremely hard to beat. Better be the best for you, Dave. What about you, Andy? How do you see this race? It's um, it's got the makings of a, of a potential blowout. There's not many you could completely rule a line through. Uh, personally, I thought Catapa Rescue was super in the heats and. Speaking to Shane over the you know the last few months, he's always said that there's not much between Catalpa Rescue and Dangerous, and that Danger uh, that Catalpa Rescue would probably surprise someone. Uh, and about four days later, come out and won at 100 to one at Melton. So uh, I didn't take that advice. But how do you see the Derby playing out on Saturday night? Yeah, no, it's a pretty open race, and you know Shane's two horses are going well, and both got winning hosts. But I'm with Sal. I thought Best S was of all the heat runs was the best run out of all of them. Um, you know, still hit the line. When it was held up after doing that work early, so I think it's the one to beat. The course out to medial, obviously, uh, be better for the run and a nice soft trip, and wouldn't be knocked around too much on that. So I think they're the top two, but uh, hopefully uh, one of Shane's get the job done for the Vicks. I might leave you to last on this question, Brittany. The Hammerheads are beauty, but do we believe anyone can beat the champ? You see what I did there, Andy? You, you've been uh, very complimentary of my wording in these questions. Um, can anyone beat the champ? Just believe. Sorry, I'm not talking about Majestu No, sorry, you asking me? Or? I'll go with you first. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, just believe. He, he just keeps winning everything, and I think uh, he'll get the job done again. Uh, he's been a fair bit of money for out of out of Baron Zeus, but not quite sure he's quite at his best. So, um, yeah, no, I think I uh, just believe he'll get the job done again and he just keeps winning and as unimpressive as he, as he looks, uh, pretty hard horse to beat. So I think you do a good job and good luck to Brit's horse in it as well. It was pretty good last time. Uh, she's a little bit frustrated at Galloped early, but um, I'm sure um, he'll go well in the race. We'll go to your next, Brittany. Sal, how do you see the hammerhead, the group one? Uh, sprint for the trotters playing out. It's, it's a great field, just believe. Uh, I'm ready, Jed, hopeful beauty. Uh, Brittany's horse, Majestic Harry, Aldebaran Zeus, as Andy said, there's been money for that horse. Um, is it just believes race again? Does he pick up another group one? Yeah, I think so. Um, he's obviously the informed horse. He's been great this season. So um, I think he's certainly the hardest horse in the race to beat. But um, it's a great race. Like I tell you, when you when you sort of go through some of them horses, it's going to be a terrific race to um, you got old horses like Tough Monarch and them sort of horses that have um, got such a good record at Menangle. Um, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a terrific race. We'll go to you, Brittany. You prepare and you will drive Majestic Harry. I have noticed that you've sacked uh, Stephanie Graham as a trainer after she took the horse to an Inter-Dominion final. So I don't know about that. But uh, can you win the Group 1 on Saturday night? You're in the market. Yeah, well, Steph's buggered off to Hamilton Island for a 12-month working holiday. So, uh, yeah. I'm not too worried about her. I'm sure that she's doing just fine. I'm doing the hard work now. But, um, yeah, really happy with Harry. Um, yeah, it's probably been a little frustrating this prep two runs and he had a really tough run first up and then he made an uncharacteristic mistake um, here at Menangle at his first run, but I thought he was really good through the line and um, he settled in now. He sort of had a, a good two weeks or so and he's got a good barrier draw, which is uh, nice as well after an inter-dominion where he probably didn't have a great deal of luck in the barrier draws there. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a really tough ask for him. Um, he's quite new to this class of racing, but, um, yeah, he's a trier and he's got good tactical speed and he'll follow pace all day and there looks to be a heap of that as well. So um, I think 
Elder Baron Zeus is going to give us a lot to chase out in front. Um, that's where I have him mapped, and it might be um, a tough run for Just Believe, but all the same, he's clearly the horse to beat, and he just manages to get the job done no matter the circumstances. So, I um, mean, he's had a, a busy few months as well, but, um, yeah, he just seems to keep churning out the win. So he's no doubt the hardest to beat. But then there's a few out wide as well. I think they'll run a fair bit of time on Saturday night. Yeah, it's going to be a ripper race. I'm really looking forward to it. I think Hopeful Beauty might be one at a bit of an each-way price. I, I thought that was a tremendous run after galloping last week, but uh, a stack of chances. It's going to be a great race for Hammerhead. The final question, we'll go straight back to you here, Britt, because you don't have a horse in this race. The other two guys do. Who will emerge from the King's Shadow and win a miracle mile for the ages? You can make yourself a hero here finding the winner of this race. It's, uh, it's an absolute cracker. Yeah, it, it is a great race, and at a really even race as well. Um, I got stuck into the form early in the week to try and decipher it. Um, and I just keep coming back to Honolulu Bay. He was just so good last week. You know, horses don't do what he did to come from as far back as he was at Menangle and to round them up and to do it, make up so much of his ground on that bend and get to expensive ego so quickly and then look as though he's doing it in second gear. Um, it was so impressive. His Hunter Cup win was sensational. He's just been great all summer long. So, from an improved gait in the small field, you know, he's not going to be far from them and, and he looks the hardest to beat for mine and um, he's a clear on top pick as well. So uh, I think that he's the most likely winner in my mind of this weekend's Miracle Mile. We'll go straight to you, Dave. You're driving Honolulu Bay. Uh, it's nice to have Brittany on your side anyway. <laughs> yes, no, it's always good. Can you... I mean, what are your confidence? Of course you can win the race. There's no doubt. Um, I agree with Brittany. Your form, Honolulu based form, has just been outstanding. Right through the Inter-Dominion Series. Uh, from memory, he was the first horse home in the Inter-Dominion Series off the pegs. He won the Hunter Cup, and he, it was a tremendous performance in the qualifier last week. You would have been tickled pink with that heading into the Miracle Mile. Yeah, I was, mate. No, it, was, it was really good. He's um, He's been in really good form. There's certainly not races, you know, that – you can go into, well, I don't go into as a driver confident. I never, I don't really go into any race confident. You can drive them confidently, but, um, you know, you're never over the line until you're actually there. So, um, yeah, we won't think too positive. We'll just um, try and dole the race uh, as we go. As the green light goes on, it's a little bit hard to, you know, looking at the race now, it's a little bit hard to really gauge on, you know, there's probably two or three different scenarios that could happen. You know, if Mac Dan doesn't come out the gate, then it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a pretty poxy lead time, in my opinion. So I can't, I can't say anything else. Wanting to try and burn off the arm, um, you know. And everyone probably at the same token too. People probably think that Honolulu Bay can't do any work. Well, sort of back to the mile. He, he's shown before that he can do work over a mile. I think he's uh, second round of Indian Dominion heats at Shepherd, and he was three wide for the last probably 1150 meters. Um, you know, maybe even 1200. He, he was massive there. So he can do the work. There's no doubt about it. Um, we've just in the past sort of few months, we've just had the draws and, and the right runs to drive him accordingly. And, and obviously over the 22 and the 2600, it's, it's allowed us to do that back to the mile. Um, if we need to use him a little bit more early, we, we can. But, um, yeah, it's just something we're going to have to sit down and have a talk about. And I'm sure when the light goes on, it's probably going to be all out the door anyway. And we'll have to weigh up our options after that. Before we go to Andy, just a quick word on Catch a Wave and, and maybe Captain Ravishing. He's uh, uh, they're probably the couple of the horses that everyone everyone's talking about. Um, can you just give us your thoughts on Catch a Wave and, and Captain Ravishing? They can obviously both win the race. Yeah, well, I don't think, to be honest, I really don't think there's a horse in the race that can't win. Um, it's going to come down to luck in running and, and barry draws and different things like that. Like I think I think every horse in the race is very worthy of being in it. Um, you know, Catch a Wave. Andy's a master, master at, um, you know, just grooming these horses, horses that are reasonably young into older horses. Um, and he's done it for a long time, so it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever to see a horse like him come out and win. He's he's um, he's going to be a really good horse. Uh, he already is, but he's going to be a really good horse to follow in the future, that's for sure. And Captain Ravishing will, um, you know, I said to someone during the week, it, all that hype last week or the week before about barrier one, can he hold up, things like that can be quite difficult for horses that have never, ever been known for their high gate speed to really have to bust their lungs early, come out in 26 and change, and then sustain that pressure. Um, you know, that's, that's sort of, if you haven't done it before, that can be quite tricky. So um, I think driven off the pace this week, 
Um, if he's close enough to him, you'd be certainly wary of whereabouts he is, that's for sure. We, um, I've been looking at some celebrations during the week, uh, Sal. I reckon you're about as good as anyone. Greg Sugars is going with these ones lately, just the, the fist pump. You're more of a lean out the back, get going early. Um, we can see a celebration if Honolulu Bay hits the front at about 100, about 100 to go, surely. <laughs> well, it's probably a... Well, it's probably a worthy cause as a race like that to celebrate I reckon. and give a good salute. I think I, I don't really salute that much, but I've just been uh, I've been lucky enough that Artie's given me some um, some good ones and ladies in red in Honolulu Bay. So I've been far enough in front that I've um, that I've been able to. I reckon Kate nearly threw her right shoulder out of the socket there, Andy, winning the chariots of fire. It was a full blown. Um... Uh, hey, well, I don't know what it was, but it was sensational. Catch a wave, talk to us about him. Um, just talking to you in private, you seem like everything's gone to plan. He, he's travelled up beautifully, he eats, uh, he drinks. Uh, you couldn't be happier by the sound of things. No, he's in really great order and uh, you're going to have to be going into a race like this. You can't be, if you're not 100%, um, you've got no chance of winning. And I'm with Sal, it's a pretty open race. It's probably the most open Miracle Mile we've had for a long time. Um, but saying that, I think Honolulu Bay is probably the one horse that doesn't have a question mark over its head. A few others, uh, whether they're at the top of their form or, you know, catch a wave from Captain Rovish and uh, only four-year-old, so whether they can handle it against the big boys. So, uh, again, you know, it's a tricky race. We No one really knows what's going to happen early. Um, that's why we have races. No one really knows what is going to happen. But I think Honolulu Bay is the one that horse that can probably overcome a little bit of bad luck and still be good enough to get the job done. Um, but yeah, no, it's going to be a great race, and you know, Sal and I, lucky enough to be part of it, and hopefully, um, one of us can be be winning it. Yeah, ripper race. Uh, I'm going to lean towards Captain Ravishing just for the record. Uh, I'm not put off by that last start run. I, I you know, he did a heap wrong. Uh, you listen to the camp; they say he was not right before the race. He pulled in his warm up. Um, he raced down on the pegs on a night where it was wet. I'm hearing a lot of people say that that was the inferior ground as such and um i'm not dropping after him dropping off him after one run i think he can win it um and it'd be great for racing if he did but uh, outside of him i think on a bay you're right andy there's just not a question mark around his form whatsoever uh, but what a great what a great race cannot wait and that's heads us into best bets so uh, we might go to who will we go to we'll keep andy for last uh, we'll go to you Brittany. what's your best bet anywhere in the country. You can go to the Meadows Dogs. You can go to the Sunderland Greyhounds in England. Where are you heading for your best bet this weekend? I better start an angle with it being right. such a big night. And I'll stay in the big race as well. Um, yeah, I think Honolulu Bay is going to be really hard to beat in that Miracle Mile. And um, hopefully for Sal's sake, um, he can get the job. And for my sake, uh, with my best bet as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm with Honolulu Bay as my best bet for the weekend. You're going to double down, Sal? Honolulu Bay for you? I'm just trying to find one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Um, oh, I can't. What about Wagga tomorrow? Right, you got a couple going around there. Can they win? Yeah. Yeah, I'll win the last, I reckon. And they all Wagga. three of them will win. All three? Yeah. Three-leg multi. Well, Nathan Jack had a two-leg multi last week, and there were two big crosses next to those. If you can pull that off, you can run the show next week. Andrew, best bet, catch a wave. Is it you were gonna you told me you were half thinking about making him the best bet chariots of fire night at sixteen dollars. I don't reckon you want to put the moz on yourself. No, but I'm gonna to go to Man Angle and I'm gonna go race six number six. It's first emergency for the Miracle Mile, but I think Major Meister. Um he was terrific last week and I just think first emergencies have a great great um form reference going into other in lesser races. So uh He's my best bet for the night. Yeah, I don't mind the way you're thinking there. I actually think if Major Meister got a run in the Miracle Mile, I, I just about back him. I reckon. I reckon he could win it. Um, Andy, I'm happy to. T I'm going to go again on Finn Frost as my best bet. There's no outlaw man there to spoil the party for me. Uh, I reckon he's just flying. A nice big field. He's got the back row draw again. I just need somebody, please, to give some speed on, and I reckon he'll be running over the top. So each way. Race five, number 10, Finn Frost at Melton for me, my best bet. Very great show, guys. Fantastic. Really appreciate all of the insights for Melton and Menangle. It's going to be a massive night of racing on Saturday night. Brittany, you'll be front and centre uh, on the track and also in front of the camera. So good luck to you. Good luck to you, Dave Moran, with uh, your team, including uh, the ones at Wagga and Honolulu Bay and the Miracle Mile. Well done to you, Andy. You've pumped up this race on social media. 
Um, you've ensured that no one ever heads to Tarkata, but um, really appreciate your efforts as well. Good luck and go well on Saturday night, guys. Hey, hey Tim, before we go, <laughs> can we just thank Jason Grimson for the loan of his phone? Yeah. Brittany, is that whose phone you've got? <laughs> She's looking to the left. Just a <laughs> quick shout out. Mine kept overheating. Might be time for a new one. Well, we know how good a trainer is. I reckon you got yours, uh, pulled it apart with a screwdriver, fixed it up and got it back in time, uh, about 10 minutes' time. That's how good a conditioner he is. <laughs> I might need someone to. Great stuff. That's been Burning Questions, March 2. Stay tuned. Shots Vision on Saturday night for all things Melton. And, of course, tune in to Menangle on Saturday night for the Miracle Mile, the Group 1, the $1 million race. We'll see you next week. Actually, I won't. It'll be Jason Bonington. <laughs>